The Death Star plans are not in the main computer. Okay, let's get started. If people are late, they can uh, log in and join. Can everyone hear me somewhat okay today? Good to go. Okay. No more hamster wheel internet here. Excellent. So thanks for joining today. It's a uh, lower turnout. Probably most people are fine with their buyer and seller packages, and that's absolutely fine by me if you are. Um, this, as I said yesterday, is primarily a roundtable discussion, if we can, and just a way for people to potentially tweak their packages uh, with Canva. Um, make it the way they want to be if they want to spruce it up a bit and to primarily talk about pre-listing packages. I don't know who, who show of hands uses a pre-listing package or a pre-buyers package. It can be pre-listing or pre-buyers package. Something you've sent to people. Jan, no Yes, you are. So Tony uses a pre-listing package. Angela uses a pre-listing package. Marie does. Oh, you guys are all all-stars then. That's fantastic. Okay. What do you put into your pre-listing package primarily? It's different compared to usually when I do the new agent training. Most people stare at me with blank eyes when I talk about a pre-listing package. Bio, yep. That's what you're doing, excellent Toby. I'm gonna to share one, usually customized. Now, does everyone have a bio in their packages of some sort? I'm just gonna ask you a, a question here. Brandon does not, okay. Do you think maybe people research you with the good old Google machine before they list with you? I guarantee they do. If I miss a phone call these days, I don't even go and uh, call it back. Usually I Google the number to see who it is. I'm staring at you blindly. There you go, Toby. <laughs> um, information professionals work with trades professionals. So in the old days, we used to have a lot more time, in my opinion, to go and sit down with people and have that conversation and explain from A to Z everything about real estate. Who feels that in today's world, our modern technology, the time frame you have with people, your, your pitch, if you will, about your value proposition is far less. Do you think you still have the same amount of time as we did say 10 years ago to really captivate someone to have that time to sit with them and go over everything? No. It's very direct and to the point. You know, we used to talk about, uh, I believe it was an elevator pitch, and now I think you have to have an escalator pitch, right? You don't have the same amount of time to go and pitch something to someone. So that's why the pre-listing package, oh, I just erased my own font there. Pre-listing packages are so important. Now, we have one that was given, sorry, one second here, go away screen. I don't want you here. There you go. Pre-listing template. If we go through, so this is your standard Royal Page one. Has anyone ever seen this before? Anyone ever seen the Royal Page prepackaged ones? Can't see. Oh, yeah, I haven't switched it over yet. Thank you, Brandon. Silly me. Let's go to new share, pre listing template, share. Now you can see it. Yeah, you really haven't seen it before if you can't even see it on my screen. Who's ever seen these before? You should be able to see this now, I'm hoping. Unless I'm a total failure at this. There we go. Okay. So in your pre-listing package, you have your thank you. Thank you is a realtor. I understand most real sellers are looking for the least amount of money. Kind of your cliche comments, right? Um, table of contents, talks about me, talks about the brokerage, 
giving back. I'm going to share this with everyone in the comments at the end. So you're going to have a copy of it and you can take it directly from my Google drive. Uh, about me, I've told everyone many, many times before I dislike, uh, photos of agents. I don't know why we're the only industry in the world that feels we have to. Hey, many people are going to disagree with me on that, but that's fine. Uh, we talk about the brokerage, Royal LePage, Royal LePage West. I personally believe that this is perfect here. Talking about giving back before we dive right into the meat and potatoes, everything we do, it separates you from the pack because we have do have Royal Page Shelter Foundation. What else does everyone put? I just don't want to talk the whole time and go through these potential pre-listing packages. Does usually do people send this digitally or do they mail it, deliver it? What do they do? If you use a pre-listing package. You can feel free to talk if you want. You don't have to hear my voice the whole time. Brandon, Barry's usually delivers when used. Deliver it more than email. Drop it off after the first intro. Okay. And how do people usually accept your pre-listing package? Give in person. It's always a nice touch. I must admit to give it in person to someone to have that face-to-face uh, time with them as much as I do love to hide behind the keyboard. Trust me. I am the first one to admit that nothing is better than belly to belly face to face talking to someone. So much context can be lost without having the opportunity to discuss it in person. I'm sure you know, but how many, okay, going through who can tell me off the top of their head, how many pages their pre-listing packages. Mm -hmm. 10, seven. That's good. You don't want to have, when I used to do it back in the day, um, I used to have a, a giant binder full. It's probably 50 pages. And I think people used to just work with me because I'd bore them so much that I'd talk through the whole thing. And that was 15 years ago. So in this day and age, you certainly don't have that much time. People have done majority of their research online. They've researched you online. They know more about you probably than you think they do. And you just have to get directly to the point. So if you have a pre-listing package, that's fantastic. Who's happy with the way it looks? Who thinks it's perfect? They've designed it. It's great. No, nope, can always improve. Always good looking update. Who has used Canva to try to do this? Who? Okay, first and foremost, what's everyone's general design created with right now? Did you pay someone to do it? Did you do it yourself? Did anyone use Canva before to do this? Oh, Alicia says they're great. She doesn't need to improve them at all. Self-made and design and publisher. Okay. Got it from Richard Robbins. We use publisher as well. Did not use Canva, but good idea. So Canva, let me go back to the beginning here of this. So if you haven't used Canva part RLP for me, yeah. So easy, you just drop it in the info and in, yep. So if we go in here, you have all these different options in Canva all the time. So the reason why Canva is such a good one is because when you create it, you get a digital version, plus you get a PDF version almost immediately. So if you wanted to share a tidbit from it, you could on social media. If you wanted to digitally send this to someone because of the world we're currently living in, um, you could do that as well without having to drive physically to their house and have it very cleanly, designly made. So if we go into Canva, I'm sure you all have a, uh, a, a um, account by now or know how to get into this. If you haven't, it's the easiest thing in the world. All you do is go to canva.com, search it, and you could either search presentation or for my situation, it's right here and click it. From that, you're going to get a whole whack load of presentation potential here. Who has their own color scheme? Who uses the Royal Page colors? Personal colors, okay. Brandon, what is your main color of your branding, of your marketing? Blue and gray, red, yeah. I thought you were gonna say pink, Brandon. 
I think that would kind of suit you. So if you were to go in here and let's say blue, you want to sort out all the other ones that are blue. Actually, let's do red because we want to stick more with, sorry, Brad, I'm going to ditch you there. We're going to do more of the Royal Page colors. So if you just hit red and you can actually, does everyone know the color code for the actual Royal Page color, color code? I've said this a thousand times if you took in my training. Alicia, what is it? Come on. You got to remember, you got to be able to remember this. FB000B. That is the direct color code of Royal LePage Red. So if you go into, if we clear this, go into templates, click the filter button, go to add a color, you can type in here FB000B, and that is the Royal LePage Red. So then that'll be up there. Oh, wait, I'm messing it up. FB000B, done. So that would be that red right there. Click that, and it's going to bring up. Oh, it's not going to do that because mine is too customized. <laughs> Sorry. But that is just so you know if you want to do customize any colors. So from there, it'll bring up any presentations with red in it. So as you can see, there's always a fair number in Canva. They're actually fantastic in doing this. So if you were to pick, oh boy, let's say this one. Has it been two years already? So you'd see here, it's, it has all the different forms of the pre-done templates here. So you could apply all 11 images. And from there, you could start building with this template your custom pre-listing package. So for this, we could obviously just delete that because I don't think I need that photo there. Go to, you could upload photos. Say we wanted to put in this shrink it down it's just drag and drop that's all you're doing on and the best part of canva as well it has all that nice click information so you see those little pink lines can everyone see that on my screen they kind of pop up every here and there that just shows you when everything's centered there and helps you create it, it has little animations in it so we could say uh Marie pre I can't type, I can't spell, I can't do any of the above. Obviously, I think you'd romance that a bit more, but this is something you could do if that doesn't quite fit for you. You can highlight all that font, go back to here, change the color. You know, it doesn't quite work as well. I mean, change the size. Maybe drag that out. No, nope, still doesn't work quite, so... Go back into it, change the font again till we get that all nice and straight. There you go. Something like that. Does that make sense to everyone? Yes, no? Anyone lost on Canva already? So that's what I would take some time to use right now with the buyers and sellers package. Now, if we go back to, can everyone, can everyone still see my screen here? Now, who uses a buyer's presentation? Or do we just sit down with buyers and go through and say, yeah, we're going to do this. We're going to do that with you. It's going to be great. We're going to find you a home. Okay, Brandon uses buyer presentation. Hmm. It's very ironic that everyone who jumped on here pretty much has one of these packages. And I can tell you that majority of the office doesn't. How does everyone feel about their buyer's package? What's the number one thing we're trying to convey when we're talking about us? Confidence in me? Okay. If you took in my training before, the number one thing that I'm always trying to push to people is value proposition. The big question that I train the new realtors in, and Alicia, you may, Alicia took my training way too many times, whether it's good or bad. But what I'm always telling people is when there is, how many, well, I don't know what the latest stats with everything going on, but how many realtors were there in the Greater Vancouver Real Estate Board where before the whole COVID thing happened? Give me a rough number. Yeah, 
Yeah, something like that. So would the big question that I have would be is why choose you? <laughs> I know I'm kind of like a broken record, Alicia. So the big question is why choose you? This is why I always ask the other realtors. So in the presentation that we have, that's usually what I ask realtors to says 20, oh, holy smokes. That's a lot of realtors. I bet you that's substantially dropping right now though, Marie. And when this dust settles, all the people who are still in the industry, you need me. There you go. All the people who are in the industry still are going to be flourishing because we're going to get a lot of these, um, what's the word I'm trying, proper, year, proper word I'm trying to use, these kind of part-timers out of the industry. They're not going to be here anymore. Um, this is too tough for them and they're, they're probably going to be bounced out. So the biggest question I have when I, when I ever used to sit down with Pete, hopefully I agree, Marie. Um, the biggest question we have is why use you? There's 20,106 licensees. I think that's in the council, isn't it? Isn't that through BC, Marie? That can't be the Greater Vancouver Real Estate Board. Because I know the Greater Vancouver has approximately 14,000. Fraser Valley has, I think, 5,000. And then spread out, maybe. I don't know. Who cares? Um, so the big question is, why use you? What's your value proposition? Does everyone feel they cover that pretty well in their, in their, in their booklets? Do you really push oh geez i guess you're right marie I'm, I'm, I'm not questioning i know you're 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 right 99 percent of the time not enough so the big question is then what differentiates you from the pack what services can you do that no one else can and please don't give me the bus bench three-word cliche that you i could not agree with you more mike who like, cause there's the three best three word standard saying on the bus benches that go, you know, you're trustworthy, hardworking, and dependable. Well, those are kind of the, 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 the standards in my opinion, as someone I'd be looking for, if you're just trustworthy, hardworking, and dependable, well that I'm hoping anyone I'm talking to is going to be that. Do you really have to push the bus bench ad and state that in your uh, buyers and sellers proposition? You kind of want to state more, right? So what I always want people to put into their buyer's package is more of a list of your services. Do you have a ton of experience? You want to push that. If you're a younger realtor, what should you be pushing? Because we do have many realtors on here, maybe uh, new to the business. So you can't say that you've been in the business for 20 years. Uh, you can't say that you've sold 1000 homes in your career, or even if you're, been in the industry for a while and, and never sold that thousand home mark. What, what, what can you push through that separates you from the pack? When I'm sitting there and you know you're having multiple sellers and buyers meeting multiple realtors, what can you put in there to separate you as your value proposition? They don't want to jump out there what they have besides your good look, Mike. Okay, Alicia, you're, you're a young realtor. So what do you offer to people that maybe, and no offense to um, some of the other realtors, what can you offer that potentially someone else can't? Yeah, there you go, Brandon. Time. What else can you offer if hopefully you're younger, you, 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 you can, yeah, Marie, I know, I know you and Kim have a, 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 bucket load of experience between the two of you. And that is probably your main value proposition to someone. Same with someone like Tony. But Angela, I'm not gonna pick on you, professional service. Okay, but what is your professional service? This is what I'm saying is when we do these value propositions, the only clients, uh, I used to tell people when I first started that I only take on, I think a three or five clients at a time. I had none, but I would always tell them that I have one spot right now for you. So if you'd like to be my client, I can work with you. I literally had no prospects or anything, but it was just a term I used to let people think that I only took on a certain amount of clients at a time 
to make sure I could service them in the way that I wanted to. So I'd say, oh, I only take on five clients. I had none. And I'd say, I have one spot left for you. Uh, okay, Janice, financing, staging, investment advice. That's very good. Social media following. There you go, Alicia. You finally got to uh, the point I was saying for someone who's maybe a bit younger and has a bit of their finger on the pulse. I'm not trying, no matter how I say this, I don't want to upset anyone. Um, but if you are maybe a younger agent and, and you have a bit more of an, an Instagram, YouTube, Facebook feel, that's something you can push. If you're someone like Marie um, and Kim, you guys have buttloads of experience, like I said. Janice, you're going to offer finance, staging, investment advice. Now, the question is through the finance, staging, investment advice, this is most likely through your, uh, your referral directory, correct? Because I, I don't, yes, because I don't, I assume you're not giving finance, staging, investment advice all at the same time. That would be a bit of a nightmare. But by having a great referral directory out there, who includes the referral directory in their main seller's package or their information? Contacts and referrals, yes. Alicia, good. Brandon, it's actually not a bad thing to do because what, uh, my parents used to do and what they trained me to do is they would build this massive referral directory and then they would hold, yeah, exactly. A whole page of people to call and they would share that with the sellers and buyers and then let those referrals know that they are their exclusive person in their referral directory. So if you have any business, please, please give me some business. And in return, I will, keep you into my referral directory and pass it out to all these home buyers and sellers. So if you had a person does power washing or gutters or garage doors and you have kind of one, one or two specialists for each one, because if you're just doing a referral directory, you're not giving an actual uh, information. So you don't have to do the three professionals as per the real estate council rules. Did what I just sent say make sense there? Sometimes I just talk and I'm, I confuse myself. And Marie, I can tell you that my mom, who's been doing real estate for 30 years, has got a ton of business from her referral directory. And when I was a local, when I was a realtor in Vancouver, I went to uh, the Boathouse in the West End and I asked them for some discounted, uh, um, what were they called? Dessert cards. Because as a, as a chef, I know you always want to get people in there. And the, rush, the Boathouse gave me like 2,000 dessert cards, which I was able to mail to the West End there and get some business from that because I was working the West End and that was my local restaurant, if you will. Uh, you did reach out to a mortgage broker to let them know I did include them in my package and they sent me a lead. I think that's fantastic. I had one mortgage broker. I sent him uh, three leads once. We were working together well. All three leads closed and he sent me a uh, $25 Starbucks card. Needless to say, I never worked with him again. So <laughs> it was pretty, pretty upset, Angela. Uh, does everyone get what I'm saying here now by the value proposition? And it, you, you might have heard this before from Richard Robbins or, or all these other um, trainers, whatever, they, whatever their names are. But this is, this is what I always train people. And you may be going, oh, James, what do you know what you're talking about? I might not. But it's one different aspect of what I wanted to go through this session with to maybe uh, – percolate your brain and see if we can't tweak this a bit to improve our buyers and sellers packages and make them a bit more on the value proposition. Because as I say over and over again, why choose you? Why in the world am I choosing Tony Filippelli to sell my home or to help me find a home to buy? You know, besides his, his devilish smile and his charming personality, what else do I know about him? So let's move on to our screen share. So he did commercial back in the day. Hey, he did. Oh, he did with his golden locks of hairy hat. I remember that. He showed it to me. It's still on his website. It was quite a good commercial, actually. So <laughs> five things to consider. So we're still on the buyer's presentation. I'm just, has everyone seen this Royal Page template for the buyer's package? No, nope. you are Hollywood, Tony. That should actually be your new name. Yeah, you stole half the content. And that's what I recommend you do with this information. And I'll share these at the end. Um, 
the one thing I'll say about Roy LePage, everyone, is they actually have a tremendous amount of content, but it's kind of hidden in their back end of that RLP network website. I've spent lots of time on it and you find really, really incredible things, but it's not really um, in a great directory in my opinion. That's just my two cents on it. It, it, it. There's a lot of good information on there, but a lot of it you need to get through some layers of website to get to. Uh, so many of these things, I don't blame you if you haven't seen it. And some things don't come up in Google Drive as easily as I would expect them to. But hey, that's my two cents on it. I'm sharing it with you now so you've seen it. So like Brandon said, I would really, really recommend taking the information, going through in this, but making it your own. Because I don't think anything would be, be more embarrassing than when you go to a listing presentation and perhaps there's two Royal Page realtors going against it and you both have the same presentation. That would be pretty... Uh, Pretty bad in my opinion. So as we go through here, you're gonna see all this information. Five things to consider when buying a home. This is still the buyer's package. Finding the right home, understanding needs today, understanding future plans, um, you know, what they're gonna go through. This is when I used to have the home buyer's checklist on there. I'd have a bunch of questions on there, one to five scale, uh, which is very easy to do on Canva. How important is this to you? How important is this to you? Who's had uh, taken out buyers and they say they must have a pool in their strata or, or, or something like that? Something really outrageous that really isn't important at the time. Well, in the end, but they think it really is. You know, I have to have a pool in my place. Nobody? Just me? Until you show them the strata fees and they realize how extortionate they are and they realize they don't need a pool. Finding the right home, search begins. So I'm not gonna go through this whole thing. You could have your website on there. It's just to kind of give you some ideas to potentially add to your buyer's package so you can make it a stronger value proposition when you're meeting with buyers and sellers. If you need help with Canva, when you're going through this, let me know. I can always have a one-on-one -on -one session with you to, to, to walk you through it if you're having situations. But most of this information, if it's in Google, Do uh, Google Drive, like you see here, most of it, you can just right click it, copy it, drag it right over to Canva. Uh, where's my one I have here? So we would click that, paste it in, and you can just steal a lot of the wording even from it. So it, it makes it incredibly easy. You don't have to try and reinvent the wheel or rewrite everything. Um, just take what they have in here that you think is great and run with it, okay? Um, how would you help? Oh, see, find the right home. Next step, pro profiling properties of interest, comparable property values, taxing, blah, 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 blah. All this information here. Price optimization, local market statistics. This is great if you're with Royal Page West because we do have such a high, high market uh, company market share. It's something you can actually talk about as someone who's managed offices that don't have a giant market share. That's always a bit of a bummer when you have to delete this section. And that's also great for newer realtors coming in the industry you can ride off the horror kind of the um higher producers in the office like the marie and kim's and janice's and 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 deborah's and, and all these realtors out there you can you know take all the company statistics and put them into your own because it will help you especially with royal page across canada because we have such a large presence uh real estate negotiations Saving time. There's a lot of good information here, so I'm not going to keep going on it. Does anyone have any questions on this? Because I, I don't just want to bore you all to death here. Questions, feedback, comments, anything? Do you want to make a really loud noise to wake you up into the microphone? Okay. Sellers listing presentation. Who here actually uses carriage trade? Okay, who knows what carriage trade is? Uh, Mike, I personally suggest less is more, but that's my own two cents. Brandon, there is specific criteria to use it. Uh, I might do a presentation on it next week because I don't have it up here, but... Um, it is something that is very uh, underutilized, I think, in our office. And to our, to our notified we. Huh? 
I know some people just use the logo, but I don't think that, no, I don't think so either. I think you need to properly use the carriage trade. It's supposed to be, carriage trade is supposed to be a very elite listing system for the top, I forget what it is, it's top, top 10% of the listings in, in the market. I actually, you know what, we'll, we will do a carriage trade presentation next week. While we have the time, and we may as well dive into carriage trade. It hasn't been something I've dove into yet, but um, you know, you're notified when you are allowed. To oh, okay, Marie. But the problem is, is that it's a, it's a separate listing presentation. It's 100% different. Can I actually show it up on my screen here? Um, uh, carriage trade. Mm, nope. Let's see this. Is this the one? No, that does not look right. I, I, I'll talk about it next week. I, I don't want to dive into it right now because it can confuse you. But the thing is that if you're notified after you list a carriage trade home, you've kind of missed, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy you, you, you got that listing. That's fantastic. But the carriage trade listing presentation is totally separate from the standard because you have more perks. It's supposed to be more exclusive. You're supposed to get more online presentation, uh, representation if you use the carriage trade uh, listing presentation and pre-notify. It's just something that should be, take into account beforehand, I guess is the word. So I know most people here don't, don't know about it, or if you have used it, just not something you really focus on. Oh yes, absolutely, Marie, where are you? Where is Marie? There we go. Yes, Marie, I, I can't unmute you, of course. Wait, 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 I'm gonna, oh, are you there now? Hi, do you hear me? Yes, Marie, thank you. I have been, I've had a listing or two that have been carriage trade. Yep. But you don't know what it is until they notify you at Royal LePage Canada. I had one in central Coquitlam a few years ago. So you put it up and you put up your regular Royal LePage signs and then they notify you because it's in the price level that's allowed. Okay. But Funny, once I did a price change, I was no longer allowed to use it. <laughs> well, that doesn't make it much sense. And, and I think sometimes they compare you, us to West Vancouver, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? And that's not always fair. No, that makes no sense I at all. Think. Yeah, so. What is going so on I don't here? know if we're allowed to use it, you know, willy-nilly kind of thing. Okay, let me look. And the but price levels of moving tire, if I'm not mistaken. Back. Yeah, because I was reading it. I had a whole thing about it. Where did it go? Um, let me see. I'm pretty sure I can do a presentation on next week because there is supposed to be specific qualifications for it. Um, oh, my gosh. I had it in here. Sorry. Everyone give me two seconds. You see me flustering around and trying to find my information here. Uh, Care straight criteria. Price, the freehold condo and recreational property listing price is no less than four times the average, average uh, residential sales price as determined by your local real estate board in the following four major markets, Metro Vancouver, Calgary, Greater Toronto, and Greater Montreal. Um, location situated in distinctive, prestigious, sought-after neighborhood on a prized acreage or land. The property possesses one or more distinguished characteristics. That doesn't make sense, then, Marie. Oh, wow. Oh, there you go. See, Sandra's always just watching out for me. Exactly what I just found after I scrambled around. There you go. But no less than four times the average residential sale price. Well, the average. So that means if our average median sale price in Greater Vancouver is what, one, just over one million, one million seventy? Correct me if I'm wrong. Oh, I'm going to. Can you still hear me? Yeah, I sure can. I'm going to mute you here. One second. There you go. Mute. Um, either way, we're not going to dive into this too much now. I just want to touch on it, but we'll put it this way. I came from Coldwell Banker before I worked with uh, Roy LePage. And Coldwell, had, Coldwell Banker had a distinct program called Coldwell, Coldwell Banker Luxury Real Estate. No, is that what it, I can't remember what it's called. But it was, uh, mine was... 2.2 in Coquitlam. That would make sense, Marie. Um, it was a very distinct property categorization, just like Kara's trade was. So I know before you went into a Coldwell Banker luxury um, listing presentation, 
you were supposed to have the Coldwell Banker luxury listing presentation ready and, and let them know your home qualifies for this. It was called Coldwell Banker Horizons back in the day. I can't remember. My, my brain's fried. But either way, we'll get into that next week, okay? So the Royal Page listing presentation. I'll help you sell your home. These are, in my opinion, the very generic ones. And what I think you should do when you're doing your listing presentation is once again, value proposition. What distinguishes you from the pack? By saying that you'll manage all steps from putting your property in the market to successful closing, save you time and energy, establish your market value of the property, market your home. See, you should really be emphasizing on the market your home. Um, diving into these a bit more, in my opinion, to really show your, your, your value and what separates you. You know, Alicia's having post-traumatic stress disorder right now, thinking about me talking about all this again. But this is what I, I really repeat myself over and over and over again, is diving into these a bit more, because this is fine with the Royal of the Page ones for, for a, a, a kind of cookie cutter one, but you really want to dive into what you're going to do. And, and I'd even give examples, if you could, about, about how you can do it and, and what you've done in your experience and how you're going to change this. Uh, manage all steps of the transactions, you know, talk, go, go deeper into it. I know you have the ability to do it. Saving you time, saving you money, establishing the market value, the negotiation. You know, who really thinks the art negotiation is still out there anymore? Come on, be honest. With all the data information out there, do you think that the art negotiation in real estate is truly as live as it was back in the day? Do you think the sellers and buyers are so educated now that that real grind of the listing of the offer presentation is still as relevant as it was, say, 10 years ago? Fair answer, Marie. Very fair. Yes, to some degree. Okay. You, you guys are in the trenches. I'm not. You're not even front to do a presentation. Yeah. Vet. When was the last time? Did, did Deborah, do you still push the in front of the seller presentation if you're representing the buyer? Does anyone still push the in person presentation? No? No, not really. I do a lot of, um, it's not even on my screen anymore, but I constantly sign up for what are they called uh, stack skills and courses. And I'm constantly trying to do things like these, my courses, these are the ones I'm currently doing. And I took a very quick psychology one on, on, um, on negotiations. And one of the things that they mentioned in it was, what's your general mind state when a stranger comes into your home? What do you think your psyche does when, when some person you don't know never met exactly? So that's one of the reasons why I don't really push people towards doing the in-person presentation. Uh, even when your doorbell rings in these days, you know, what's the first thing you do nowadays? You go, who the heck is at my door? No one's supposed to be here. Who's doing a pop by? Um, I think our mind frame has changed a lot compared to the uh, back in the day when the doorbell rang and you were all happy and you'd go to it and open your door and say, who's here? Yay, come on in, have a drink, let's have a barbecue. Now, if you don't get a pretext or WhatsApp message or Facebook message notification, you kind of, you're on the defense right away. So long story short though, uh, one of the psychology things that I, that I learned about there was that one, no, no pepper spray, there you go. Um, one of the mental things that, that I read about was that people do get on the defense when a stranger comes in their home, sits down in front of them and starts talking to them. They don't know you. They, they, they don't necessarily like you even. So, you know, to be starting telling them what their homes were, sometimes they can get into a big, uh, you know, a bit defensive, if you will. But that's, once again, my two cents and uh, don't always need it. Marketing your home, you know, this is a really important one. Of course, it's going to go on MLS. It's going to, of course, it's going to go on Royal. Ugh, I can't speak. Of course, it's going to go on royalpage.ca. Um, innovative marketing tools and technology. Well, what the heck does that mean? You know, um, what what does that mean? 
marketing your home website is easy to use you know I wouldn't really push this that much yes it is the number one visited website in Canada besides realtor.ca it has yeah I should have the statistics in front of me but it has an incredible amount of hits it hits every uh, every day every year innovative marketing tools taxes once again this is a great platform but I truly think that you should be diving in deeper to this and just explaining it more, right? And you can go through, so say we wanted to do this, uh, bring your home to life for buyers, copy this. You know, all you do is select it, drag your cursor over, right click, copy, take it back over to our current, uh, sorry, let me go back here, our current presentation. What's this doing here? Yes, replace current image. Uh, we erase her, paste her information in. Oh, wants me to do control V. And you have your information there, which then you can change the font and do whatever you want to do with it. So that's pretty small. So once again, just like I showed you before. Oh, now we're a really big font, but going through. That's about it for everyone. I wanted people to just to come here, learn how to potentially update their listing package. Does anyone have any questions, anything they want to discuss, any questions for the group? You have everyone on here. So if you have your, where to go here, uh, new share, where's my whiteboard? And to the new realtors on here, uh, Toby and Tina, we're going to be diving into this far more deeper than just kind of the glance over I'm doing with everyone else here, just so you know. So don't look at the computer and go, what the heck was that, James? Um, this was a kind of a fresher upper for the other realtors who have this or to get some ideas moving during this time about how they can spruce up their buyers, sellers packages, their pre-listing packages and what they could potentially use in them. Questions, thoughts? Leave me alone. Let me go do this now. That's good. That was great. I was saying to Brandon how much we I miss hockey. He was on my hockey team. And, oh, if there's one thing I miss, it's getting on the ice, Brandon. Okay. Is there anything anybody in particular wants to talk about? And maybe next week. Uh, we're going to go over the YouTube video editing. Uh, I think that's going to be a very low participation course, but that's fine. I'm going to do it. Then we're going to go and record it. And then we're going to talk about carriage trade next week. Is there anything anybody else wants to chat about? Do you think it's a good, cause I, I, I don't like always guessing what people want to learn or what they want to discuss or what they think is important to talk about right now with the new realtors. It's, it's fine because they kind of have to follow my, my lead, but for, for the rest of you more experienced realtors, what do you want to discuss? What do you want to talk about? What do you want to learn? I'm a nerd. I sit here on my computer all day long and learn things. Let me learn things to pass on the minimal knowledge I have. Okay, if you have any ideas, send them to me. I'm not going to put you on the spot. Okay, Toby, you need, uh, we'll keep you posted, Jane. Okay, good. Yeah, get back to me. Let me know if there's something you go, man, I wish I could learn, I learn that. Give me the challenge to go learn it myself and get back to you. Contract writing and everything else, I don't know how much of you need about need from me. You know, I read your contracts. Everyone who's on this uh, call right now, your contracts are great. Contracts I actually don't even find that. Does everyone really find contracts that hard unless you get stumped? Update your marketing. Okay, Janice, what do, what, what do you mean by that? Your, your, your logo, your Facebook cover, your just general look of everything. I can dive into that with you, Janice. Just a whole new template for everything, kind of a cleaner, modern look, or what do you think? We can do a marketing rebrand. I just love calling people out in here and waiting for them to type, it's great because I know they're panicking, trying to type as quick as they can. Rebrand would be interesting. Okay. 
I will make a course for rebranding. Okay. Let's dive into that then. So I will set up a course for next week. Yeah, we'll do that. And let's talk about rebranding and I'll research the internet and go through my websites that I do. And let's, uh, let's, I bet you there's a course in my little nerd websites here to do. Okay. I'm not going to go through that now, but that's what we'll do. And we'll go through that. Okay. So that's the upcoming schedule for everyone. And besides that, as always, email me, message me, WhatsApp, whatever you want to do. If you need help, um, I'm not using team viewer anymore. I'm using something called Zoho. If you need me to access your computer because team viewer are a bunch of pirates and they up their prices during this time and I will not support them in any way. It's ridiculous. They went from a very fair value to extortionate. Okay, everybody. That's your daily dose of James. I think we can move on now. Okay. Toby, Tina, don't worry. I'm, you, we have our meeting tomorrow. We're going to go through everything tomorrow. Okay. Going, going, gone.